Thanks. Well, Mr. Krongard, uh, I uh, gave an opening statement, and in it uh, I summarized a number of significant issues that I wanted to discuss this morning. But I want to start by asking you about new information we've received regarding a series of conflicts you've had with the Department of Justice. On January 18, 2007, the Justice Department requested assistance from your office investigating allegations of construction problems at the new Baghdad Embassy. According to John Dodona, the head of your investigations division, the Justice Department was seeking assistance in obtaining contract files, contract records, payment invoices, and inspection reports. But on January 23, you directed your investigators to stand down on this and not assist. The committee asked the Justice Department about this, and they told us they called you personally to ask for assistance in locating contract documents and locating and interviewing witnesses. The Justice Department in informed the committee that you gave them different reasons for your refusal. First, they said you claimed there were other pending matters involving First Kuwaiti. What other matters involving First Kuwaiti were you referring to? Sir, at that time, uh, both myself and MNFI IG had conducted our on-site work and were in the course of preparing reports. And I told the representative of the Justice Department of that work, and I did tell him that I obviously couldn't control the timing of his work, but I said that if that could wait until those two pieces of work were completed and the reports issued, it would preserve the independence of those without possibly suggesting that either MNFI, IG, or myself was in any way affected by Those what reports were about labor trafficking. And what the Justice what Department asked you about was information about contracting uh, possible criminal actions with regard to the contracting itself. Uh, sir, I, I differ with that. The scope of work that the person from the Justice Department called me about, and I believe some of this is under seal, so I'm a little bit, um, it's hard for me to e express other than the scope was far broader than what you had just said and did include the trafficking issues. Uh, you're talking about under seal, your investigation is under seal, or the no, Justice it's Department? the Justice Department. Okay, but you told the Justice Department you couldn't, give them the contracting information and cooperate with their investigation on contracting abuses that might be criminal, involve criminal activities, because you're doing your own investigation. Your own investigation was on labor trafficking, and therefore you didn't want to give them the information on the other issue until you completed your investigation. Is that your position? No, sir, it is not. There were actually three things that uh, the Justice Department was talking about. They were talking about conducting interviews, having representatives from my staff conduct interviews for or with them. They were talking about obtaining documents from the State Department, and they were talking about these issues regarding the conduct of the workers at the new embassy compound, which, by the way, was the essence of what started their work. Their work expanded from that. With respect Can I read to you uh, uh, something that came out in uh, – in our report that I want you to react to. Uh, one internal email sent in January 2007 reported that the Justice Department was seeking help from the Inspector General in investigating billing for work done improperly or incompletely, theft of materials and labor, and alleged corruption of a State Department official overseeing contract performance. Now, that should have been a high priority. They're looking at criminal actions they want your help, and you're telling them, no, I, I can't help you. I've got other things going on. According to the committee's investigation, you had already refused to allow your investigators to open a case. There were no audits underway, and we could identify no other investigation at the time this Justice Department request was made. The Justice Department also informed the committee that you said this was not the sort of thing the Office of Inspector General did and it would be a conflict for the OIG to be investigating those complaints and conducting a law enforcement investigation. 
Is it your position that there is some provision of law that prohibits your office from assisting the Justice Department? Sir, you've made a lot of statements. I wonder if I could – I was trying to write down the ones. Can I comment as I have them? Well, my question to you that I want you to answer is, do you believe there's some prohibition in law from your cooperating with the Justice Department and helping them when they are asking for your assistance? Absolutely not. In fact, I try and cooperate with the Justice Department as much as I can, and I applaud their efforts. And what happened here, as soon as we were able to find out what it was they were doing and segment what we could and couldn't assist them with because of divorce and other complications, I did do exactly what you have just asked, and I gave them the Deputy Assistant Inspector General for Audits, together with another person that were given to them to work with them to accomplish the very objectives they wanted to accomplish. Well, your own investigators had a different view. This is how one of your investigators responded to the news that you had refused the Justice Department request. Wow, as we all know, this is not the normal and proper procedure. When looking at the IG Act, DOJ, and PCIE guidelines, and the OIG community as a whole, we are supposed to work under the direction of the USAO DOJ. I am stunned. I hope you documented the orders that were provided to you. Wow. In fact, the committee has identified at least three other occasions in which the Justice Department came back to you and asked for assistance on this investigation. In May, the Justice Department sought your assistance obtaining invoices and inspection records on whether blast-proof walls in the embassy had been constructed properly. In June, the next month, the Justice Department sought your assistance obtaining documents pertaining to another first Kuwaiti contract. And in July, the Justice Department requested assistance in getting a copy of two cables mentioned in a front-page article in the Washington Post regarding construction problems at the embassy. In all of these cases, you refused their requests. You have also apparently resisted the Justice Department's efforts to investigate whether Blackwater was engaged in arms smuggling in Iraq. On July 10th, John Dodona sent an email notifying you that his office would be working with the Justice Department on this. This is John Dodona who works at your Office of Inspector General. The next day, you ordered Mr. Dodona and his team to stop immediately and directed Mr. Dodona to arrange a personal briefing for you from the Justice Department, and you told him he could not proceed in any manner until the briefing takes place. After you received that briefing, you agreed to allow one of your investigators to assist, but you then assigned your Congressional and Public Relations Director to oversee his actions. Although she had no law enforcement background, you described her as your alter ego and directed her to provide you with operational awareness. You halted an investigation, demanded a personal briefing from the Justice Department, assigned your Congressional Affairs Director to keep tabs on the investigation. Do you agree that these steps were highly unorthodox? No, sir, I do not. You've made a lot that is very hard for me to respond. Let me take the last one first, which is I believe you used the name Blackwater. In early July, Stuart Bowen, the Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction, asked for the assistance of my office in conducting an audit of two Blackwater contracts. We agreed to do 